The New Testament reading this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you. This is the word of God for us this day. Be to God. All right. So his son had asked me a while back to uh, speak today. It, today's Laity Sunday, uh, and then also she said, "Let's make it a UMW Sunday." So I thought, okay. So trying to figure out what to to talk about. So I decided to talk about becoming. A United Methodist Women. And when I was standing in the back this morning, Brent says, Patty, aren't you already a United Methodist Women? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I finally am. So I'm going to start off talking a little bit about my personal history through United Methodist Women, and then I'm going to talk about United Methodist Women as a whole. So I grew up in the Methodist Church and always wanted to be a United Methodist Woman. My mom was a United Methodist Woman. One of the earliest memories I have is going to a meeting with my mom it was at somebody's house and they had like a nursery upstairs set up and I was playing trucks with this other little boy who ended up, we grew up in the church together when you know, we were the same age. But I just remember that. And then I remember when I was in elementary school, my mom always talking about her circle meeting. She had to circle, she had to go to circle. And I thought that had to be probably one of the coolest places to go. Given in that, I was in school in the late 60s, early 70s when we were all in a row and we never got, if we got to sit in a circle, it was like great time. So she must be going and having really fun if she's going to circle time all the time. So I, I just thought, well, that's really neat. Then when I was, I think I must have been in middle school age, what we called junior high then, the UMW gave out scholarships to go to a camp. But it's not, it wasn't just any camp. They specifically picked girls in the congregation, two or three girls in the congregation, to go to a camp called Reach Out Camp. And it was a United Methodist camp. It was on a United Methodist college campus called Mount Union College, which is in Ohio. Um, I, and they picked me to go. And it was a blessing because my family did not have money to go to camp. I could have never been able to go. And then I got to go on a college campus. That was my first experience of seeing what a college campus was like and staying in the dorms. And the reach out camp, what it was, was teenagers, girls and boys, um, probably a couple hundred that got together for the week. One of the days they sent us out into the community to do work. We, I remember going to like a preschool and being with the kids and stuff. There were all kinds of different things that they would do really beginning to teach us the foundations of Methodism and what it means to serve. And then the rest of the time we had little studies and lots of singing and just got to eat in the college cafeteria. And I ended up going three years. They paid for me to go and each year when we came back we would do a little presentation then for the United Methodist Women and then I found out about Circle Time wasn't as cool as I thought, <laughs> but anyway, um, we did presentations to United Methodist Women, and United Methodist Women, you know, really supported me um, and, and helped me grow at, at a time in life where a person could go lots of different ways. That was a great place to focus on every summer, and United Methodist Women also uh, were big supporters of our youth group that we went on mission trips starting when I was about 16 or so, we went on mission trips to different, um, <coughs> Appalachia it was the main place we went. Uh, I graduated from high school, went to college, had some years where really didn't go to church a whole lot, maybe made guest appearance with my parents once in a while. Um, got married, moved out here. Uh, a year or two after we moved out here, started coming to Brantwood and decided to join the church and at that time, um, Ellen Rowan did the classes for us, and at the last class she said, okay, so now we've talked about what the church can do for you. What are you going to do for the church? And I said, well, I want to be United Methodist Women. 
So he's like, great, next week or in the next couple of weeks, they're having a salad luncheon. And back then, the salad luncheon was on a Wednesday during the week. Lots of people from Liberty came over. It was a big deal, and they needed people to work. So I helped out with the, the salad luncheon. And I was busy. I was going to graduate school at the time, and I was working and didn't really have time for circle meetings. Uh, and Billy Fortner, bless her heart, she um, supported me by buying me a subscription to the Response Magazine and World Outlook. And that was really my connection to United Methodist Women for a while. Once in a while, I would go to a circle meeting that was in the evening, but really didn't um, go very often. Then I had my children, and when I was pregnant with my second child, I was on bed rest for a couple months, and United Methodist Women brought me dinner every week. It was just, we have no family here. It was just my husband and I, and I had Amy, who was about a year old, and I was pregnant, and I remember Billy calling, saying, how can we help? And I said, well, you know, the day, I had to go to the doctor every week, and the day I go to the doctor, it's really hard for my husband to cook dinner and get me to the doctor and all that kind of stuff. So the, that day, I was always had, we always had a hot meal from United Methodist Women. And my, my husband, who does not come to church, he, he really noted that. He says, you know, our friends, they were nice, but it was the United Methodist Women who fed us. And in many ways, they fed us. I was just... I, we're in the middle of packing and getting ready to move, and I was going through, and I found, for some reason, I'm a saver, and I had every card since before my child was born up until five years, which they're not gone, but I was finding cards that people in the church had sent me when I was on bed rest, and it was just like, oh, they really did feed us, not just with food. Um, for a while, when my kids were little, I could go to circle meetings. We actually just started doing some Saturday circle meetings. We were, you know, going pretty good with United Methodist women, and then and I felt like I was really becoming a United Methodist woman. And then my kids started playing competitive soccer and swimming, and that takes up a lot of time, and it takes up a woman's extra time that they might have to go to a circle meeting. And so for a while. I wasn't going. I was still getting my response magazine, but I, I wasn't going. And then uh, my kids grew up. Well, actually, for a while, they didn't need me as much, so I, could, I was going to the Tuesday morning because I was working part-time, and I was going to Tuesday morning circle for a while and getting re-involved in, under the leadership of Charlene, really watching United Methodist women do a lot uh, in our church and, and ignite a lot in our church. And then I started working full time and couldn't go Tuesday mornings. So we restarted a uh, evening circle. Back in the day, this church had three circles. So we're up to two now. And I have to say, I feel it, really feel now that I am a United Methodist woman. I, it took a long time, but yes, I, I am um, one. So what I want to talk about now is a little bit about the history of United Methodist Women and what United Methodist Women are doing today. And I have a video. Hopefully I can get it up. Almost 150 years, United Methodist Women have been um, doing, uh, they started off with uh, missionary societies. and. When they show those little ladies writing letters, and it was 1869, and given that this church was formed a little right before that, I'm imagining that maybe some women here got those letters. That's what I always think, you know, and that was before the internet. So you're talking, they were sending letters, and they were, they were not being flown across the country. It was the US mail. It was coming across on train. Yeah, train, was the train, train even, even built? Yes, so, I mean, but it was, it would take a while. It wasn't instantaneous. Um, so over the years, the United Methodist uh, in, evolved, and it uh, ended up with eight different congregations coming together to make the United Methodist. And it was in 1972 that they became known as the United Methodist Women, which, think about it, it's not so long ago. I was alive then. <laughs> and then in 2012, the General Conference voted to make United Methodist Women um, autonomous. 
meaning that they're their own group within the church, but they are separate from the church. And uh, I think the quote that came from uh, Harriet Jane Olson, our work is not just about service, it's about worship, it's about standing up, stepping up, making our voices heard. We try to help governments see the world the way we see the world because it's positive, it will positively impact the lives of women, children, and youth. And I think women do have a pers different perspective than men when it comes to certain areas of justice. Um, and and it's, it's nice that we have this group. And, and it started with eight women, and today there's about 800,000 women in the United States, across the world. So it's, it's a large organization. So the purpose of United Methodist Women, it's on the front of your uh, bulletin, is that it shall be a community of women whose purpose is to know God and to experience freedom as whole persons through Jesus Christ, to develop a creative supportive fellowship, and to expand concepts of mission through participation of the global, global ministries of the church. And from the beginning, the United Methodist Women have mostly focused on women, children, and youth. That's really where United Methodist Women place their focus. Uh, and women have been empowered by leadership, education opportunities, something as simple as sending a girl to camp. Um, mission education, the reading program, and the, if you would see the tools that they have on the internet now, but before it used to be mailed, but things to help people learn and um, become advocates in their own community. Uh, it allows women to act and empower women in the United States and across the world. And we also support projects improving the special needs of women um, because of their refugee status or immigration situation, um, people that are abused, illiterate, um, uh, helping with microloans for economic dependence and in education, helping with, with the education disparities and, and so much more uh, for the women. When it comes to children, um, because women usually care for children, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, help, you know, by helping women, you are helping children, but also um, children also letting, um, Sometimes they don't have a voice, and United Methodist women can help advocate in their behalf, helping with um, street children, sexual, sexual exploitation, child labor. Jan and I were talking before about the, the human trafficking and, and children, that, that that's affected, and that's becoming a big issue with uh, United Methodist women. And then working with youth. Uh, United Methodist Women help a lot with the mission support of the, the US2 program, which is a program for young women to do mission work in the United States, also the mission intern program and, and a global justice volunteers program. And one program that actually my daughter applied for and got but then decided not to go is that United Methodist Women had offered her a whole expense paid trip for two weeks to Korea to learn about North and South Korea, teach a little bit of vacation Bible school, and and it, and that was all paid by United Methodist Women, um, at, not at the local level, but at the national level. It was something she had found. It ended up conflicting with some of her other studies, and she couldn't go. But those are the kind of programs that they have um, for young women. So. They work for justice through service and ad advocacy. And um, beginning in 2016, these are the four areas that are going to be the main focus. Because if you just say that, you get overwhelmed. So they've drilled it down. So climate justice and giving stewardship that provides sustainability, maternal and child health, life saving access and education that promotes well being. Racial, gender, and justice, protecting women and families by ending criminalization of people of color, and economic inequality. Inequality is always a woman's issue. Uh, next, I'm gonna have Roxana come. She had the 
wonderful opportunity yesterday to attend the California Nevada Conference United Methodist Women's Annual Celebration. And she called me last night excited about things she had heard. So I said, why don't you go ahead and share for a couple of minutes? So, hey, some's thinking, oh, she's always excited. <laughs> and I am. Uh, <laughs> so my report. Um, our theme this year, Legacy, Women Planting Seeds for Christ. Our scripture reference was Luke 8, 15, but the seed on good soil stands for those with an honest and good heart. They hear the message, they keep it in their hearts, they remain faithful and produce a good crop. We installed new conference officers, we approved our 2016 budget, we celebrated the mission work done by the local units and our four districts, um, for the California Nevada Conference. We applauded the women meeting the challenge of our reading program, which was brought to us uh, by the Evangelical United Brethren Church when our churches merged. That was something that their women's group had, and they brought that um, into the United Methodist Women's. Um, locally, we are very proud of Sister Patty, who committed to um, completing Plan 1 of our reading program, and she did it. <laughs> that was a big commitment. We learned about exciting new opportunities coming for 2016, uh, especially uh, Fresh Wind Blowing, which is the theme for our Western Jurisdiction United Methodist Women's Meeting uh, that will be held in Salt Lake City in April. And right now, Patty and I are planning to go. I hope some other people will come too. Um, we continue to embrace Legacy 150, as we look towards our 150th birthday in 2019, we sang, broke into, up into workshops for deeper study. I uh, went to a human trafficking um, workshop, which was, um, I'm still, can't grasp it, but it's, it's quite something. And you'll be hearing a lot more about that. We were inspired and challenged by our keynote speaker, Bishop Warner Brown. He applauded us for our legacy of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world in our area of expertise, our work with and for women, children, and youth. He asked us to ponder if one of the reasons that South Korea now has a woman president is it because of the commitment of the United Methodist Women to women and girls in that country. He continued, Many see a need and they watch. Watching requires nothing from us. The United Methodist women see a need and they don't watch. They get up and do. They get up and go. It's an ex it was inspiring and it's exciting and it's wonderful to be with a huge group of women of all ages. I am fortunate to always be, always see my mother and sister at these events. And I come away and I see these videos that we watch today and we are courageous and we are inspiring and we are entrepreneurial and we are lots of things as United Methodist Women and it makes me so proud to be one of us. Um, Saturday is going to be the El Camino Real District's um, annual celebration. And I know that it's Vernon's um, memorial. I am planning to go ahead and still attend. Our new district superintendent is going to be the keynote speaker, Stacy Current, and we are going to be seeing her, and we're going to be hearing from her, and she has some really great things um, that she would like to see coming from Brentwood, and I am really excited about what is going to be coming down the road for our church, but especially for our United Methodist women. And I applaud Patty's leadership, and um, I applaud her for saying yes to Sung this morning. I know that she was nervous. <laughs> Thank you, Roxanna. So what do we do locally? And I, I, there's an insert that I put together um, that you can see, but one of the things is we raise money for missions. And our United Methodist women 
has made over three thousand um, dollars and, and has been able to disperse three, over three thousand dollars. And some of the local ones are, are listed um, there: uh, Hope House, the Congregational Care Network, Youth Activities, our, our VIM going to Guatemala, the Mercy Hall projects are supported. The Jesse Lee Circle, that's their pet project, and they, they focus on those, um, the, all the projects within the Mercy Hall projects. Uh, we also give to the Gun Moon Home and the Mary Elizabeth Inn, which are two places, safe places for women to be, um, to, to go. And those have been there since the 1890s, I believe, is when uh, Mary Elizabeth Inn was started. Uh, last year, we, uh, Cheryl and uh, we got to go to uh, uh, Ubuntu and actually see the, the both places and, and what they're doing for women and how it's evolved over time. Before it was a place where if a young woman was coming to work in the city and needed a safe place to live, that's where she could go. Now it's um, a different type of housing. One is, one is for uh, women who are abused and another one is to get homeless women off the street. Um, we do our pledge to mission helping with global projects, and uh, the United Methodist, uh, the Mercy Hall, uh, one of our global projects is the Jacobs Well Water Project, where we help with water, which is such a simple thing, but such a vital thing. We do missions, and so last night I was putting my slideshow together when Roxana called me. I hadn't finished all the way. She called right when it was time to put, insert her. I said, I can insert you right here. But I was like, well, I said, all, all we do is raise money. It doesn't seem like we do anything else. And I was really feeling down. And then I started to think, no, what do we do? And we do mission studies and half programs. Uh, we have this year studied the Creative for Happiness, Understanding Your Life, which is a program, United Methodist Women. It's a book. It has, you know, ways to lead the study. It's all there for us. And we've also um, studied poverty. Four times a year, our circles get together and um, have some study together. And we always do the call to prayer and self-denial and world thank offering where we learn about different things that are going on either in the United States or around the world that um, United Methodist women help, uh, uh, part of, help, help uh, fund. We also attend the conference and district events. There's leadership training put on every year. There's a spiritual growth retreat in the, in the spring. There's Mission U in the summer, which we got to go, Jen and Roxanne and I got to go this year to Mission U up in uh, Reno. And we do, and they have the annual celebrations such as yesterday, where it's just, there is nothing like being in a church that's packed full of women of all ages that are just singing and, and just being there. It's just a wonderful feeling. It makes you glad to be in United Methodist Women. We welcome all women in the church. There's not any special qualifications. If you're coming to church, you can come to United Methodist Women. And I, I do want to say, I, I send out emails for our circle meeting and, and that type of thing. And, and some of the, the moms are busy. There's, you know, people at a certain point in their life, they're busy, they can't come. And one of them sent, I, sorry, I can't come to circle meeting. I have this going on. And I said, the greatest thing about United Methodist Women is that they're always enough women to keep it going that when it's time for you it will be here and it's been 150 years and it's there for women when it's time and so sometimes you can't be the most active you can be is reading the response magazine but you can still be a united methodist women and, and be a part of of that group the uh bible verse today oops oh i yeah, there it is. The Bible verse today was, we give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind your faith of, and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father, knowing, brethren, beloved by God, his choice of you. Now, I know that this wasn't written for United Methodist women or women in the church, but I don't think there are better words that, that could be said.